I don't want you to struggle with your two-handed backhand like I did for many years. I don't want you to fall for the same traps and mistakes that I fell into. And so in today's video, I'm gonna pull together some powerful tips that are gonna help you with your two-handed backhand so you can get more power, more drive, more consistency, and more topspin. The tips that I'm gonna share with you can help you make breakthroughs the next time you step on the court. I really believe that. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about getting power on the two-handed backhand. We got a question from a subscriber that asked for it. He wants to know how he can get more power and he wants to know if he should use his bottom hand more or his top hand, which I'm gonna to refer to bottom hand and top hand in this video instead of left or right because I'm a lefty. So I'm probably gonna throw some of you off uh, because of that, but just keep in mind that I'm a lefty and uh, we're gonna talk about bottom hand and top hand throughout this video. Now, we're gonna get into a three-step formula to help you get more power on your two-handed backhand. And I wanna preface this by saying, the two-handed backhand was my weakest shot. I never really solved it on the tour. It was one reason why guys on the tour kept picking on it. It just wasn't a very good backhand. Now, there were times that I could unload and rip it, but for the most part, this was my weaker link and I had a hard time generating pace. So, you know, just keep that in mind. I feel like I can coach it well and I can help players hit their two-handed backhand better, but I never was the guy who could do it as well as I wanted to, which kind of bummed me out because the serve and the forehand were my thing, the backhand not so much. Okay, enough about me. We gotta help you with your two-handed backhand and give you a three-step formula. The first step is what I call tempo. You might not hear this a lot when it comes to getting power, but it's about tempo. I see a lot of players, when they take the racket back, they'll take it back and sometimes they'll just even stop right here. Uh, players like Venus Williams actually takes the racket back and sometimes gets here early. I'm not a big fan of that, although she has a great two-handed backhand. I like the take back, and, and it doesn't matter to me if the take back goes high, that's probably for another video, high, or if it's cocked up like Djokovic, or if it goes straight back like this. You've gotta find the style that works for you. I'd probably avoid taking it back like this, okay? But what you wanna focus on is when you take the racket back, it's almost like the backswing is part of the forward swing. <clears throat> Instead of getting back here early, turning early like this, you wanna feel like you're almost stalking the ball with your strings and the racket is going back and then it comes forward at the right time. That's where that tempo and that rhythm comes in. You think about your serve, you don't toss the ball up in the air and wait for it to get more power. You actually go slow and then right when you're about to make contact, you accelerate. So you wanna go back at a, at a I don't wanna say slow, but you wanna go back in a pretty methodical way, almost like a pendulum, you go back and then you can accelerate through the ball, okay? So you wanna feel like you go back, forward, right? Back, forward. And again, you can start, you can take it back like this slowly as you stalk the ball and then accelerate, all right? But the key is not to get here too early, all right? So try to find the right timing of when to take the racket back. And that can vary depending on the speed of the ball. If the ball comes really fast, you've got to get it back, right? But you'll get it back and then you'll swing. If the ball comes slow, you can, you can wait. You can wait and then you can accelerate to the ball. Step number one. Okay, step number two in this video to get you more power on your two-handed backhand is to relax your hands, to relax your hands and your arms. And this is probably one of the most common mistakes I see with two-handed backhands, is that players, when they swing, they're gripping the racket really tight and their arms are really tight and they just can't get any acceleration. They can't get any power because they're gripping too tight. When I give lessons and I have players hit two-handed backhands, they're usually really scrunched and they're really tight with their hands. And I'll walk up to them and I'll just have them wiggle their fingers. And they're like, oh my gosh, I was death gripping the racket. This death grip is the killer of power. And so whoever sent in this question, I bet you you're gripping the racket too tight with both hands. You should pay attention to which hand do you grip the racket tighter with? Is it your bottom hand or your top hand? Or are you gripping it tight with both hands? 
So what I like to do when I'm working with players is when they finish their swing, I like to have them relax their hands. And I'll start by having them relax their bottom hand. Okay, so it's almost like hitting an opposite hand forehand, but I don't make them hit the opposite hand forehand with one hand as they swing. It's two hands on the racket, but at the end, we relax the bottom hand like this. So I'll have a player, I'll have a player swing and wiggle their bottom hand like this, okay? Then, the next thing I'll do is I'll have him relax the, I'll have them relax the, the, the opposite hand. So now I'll have them relax the top hand like this, okay? Now, usually you're gonna find again which hand are you squeezing too tight on the racket with, and that's impacting your power and your relaxation, and your ability just to swing effortlessly. So the final thing I do that makes a huge difference for players is at the very end, I make players wiggle both hands, or both fingers I should say. The fingers on both hands. <laughs> Easy for me to say, right? So I make sure I have them wiggle the fingers on both hands like this. And all this does is create awareness. If you can create awareness, then you can start to make the changes, okay? So that's step two, is being able to relax the hands and the arms and creating that awareness. And I start with the end of the swing because I don't want players too relaxed at the beginning. I want them to be holding the racket with a reasonable amount of firmness, not too tight, but you gotta hold the racket here. But at the end, then you gotta, you're gonna be naturally firm at contact, but if you relax at the end, it's just gonna teach you how to let the arms do the talking to create more, more power for you. All right, let's get into the third step now. And this third step has to do with the feet and how you can use your feet more efficiently to get power. And so I see a lot of players stepping into their backhands and they swing, they step across their body and they swing like this. They can't get any power this way. And when I was trying to improve my two-handed backhand as a pro, I had a lot of coaches tell me that I needed to get my outside leg behind the ball and then step in. And I think that's a great tip. If you can get behind the ball and load this leg and then step in like this, you can hit great backhands. But there's a problem with that. When you're playing a point and you're running around the court, it's oftentimes very difficult to get in the exact position and then step in. So if you find yourself across, stepping across like this, after you make contact, you do not want to stay here. You want to make sure that you square up when you're done. So the key, <clears throat> the key here is when you step in that you bring this leg around. Now I do also see a lot of players bring it around at the same time. There's actually a little bit of a delay. You're going to swing and then the leg comes around like this and notice how I'm in a low base. Most people come around, they're standing straight up and they're in this, they're, they're, their legs are like, they're like pogo sticks, they're like, to like sticks. They're not in, a, in an athletic base like this. So you really have to practice stepping in, swinging and making contact. Look at where my back leg is. And then it comes around. It is not at the same time. And it is not reaching like this and just staying in this position. So if you follow those three steps, if you work on your tempo, if you work on relaxing your hands, and you work on squaring up at the right time, when balls are in your strike zone, you're gonna get more power on your two-handed backhand. Whether you get the power from your top hand or your bottom hand, not as important to me. Everybody has different styles. Agassi used more of his bottom hand, straight arm. Borg used more of his bottom arm. A lot of players now actually, bottom hand. A lot of players now use their top hand to get power and control. Everybody has different styles. You've got to find what works for you. But if you follow the three-step formula I gave you, you can get more power on your two-handed backhand. We're going to go over a really fun concept that's going to help you with your two-handed backhand. It's actually a concept that I struggled with throughout my entire career. And it's something that I'm still practicing right now to see that if I can take my two-handed backhand to another level. So what is this concept? Well, a big problem that many players have is that when they step in on the backhand, they actually take too big of a step. So when players do this, and you might be guilty of this yourself, when players do this, it actually causes you to lose your balance, 
you actually lose sight of the ball because your head actually drops and your base is too wide where you can't really push off of this leg before you step in. So one thing that I like to have players focus on, especially when they're not under stress, is to actually step into the backhand, but to focus on having a narrower stance. Now this might feel awkward at first, but it sure is going to help you if you're used to striding out and leaning into the backhand too much. So I'm gonna show you the wrong way right now, and then I'm going to show you what you can practice to get that, that stance narrower on your two-handed backhand. So this would be a big stance, a big uh, stride out, and that causes me to lean in like this. Not the ideal position you wanna be in with your two-handed backhand. Now the alternative and the more effective way to do it is when the ball comes, you're gonna stay more upright. And even when you pick this foot up, you're just going to put it down in place instead of striding out like this. Here we go. So I just make a little step where if the ball comes in my strike zone here, I get up to the ball and I make a little step before I go to hit the ball instead of a big step. Let me show you this again and then I'll give you one in slow motion. Totally upright when I hit that ball, didn't stride out. So work on that. See if you can keep your stance more narrow on your two-handed backhand when you're stepping into the ball. And let's see how that works for you. We're gonna go over a special finish that you can use on your two-handed backhand. Now the finish we're talking about to today is what I call the Lansdorp finish after the world-renowned coach Robert Lansdorp. Now Robert coached at least five of the top well, number one players in the world, including Pete Sampras and Lindsey Davenport. He has an incredible track record of helping players develop amazing ground strokes. And one of his concepts on, his two, on the two-handed backhand is to finish with the racket out in front. And I got a question from a player who actually sent in an email to me asking me when to use the Lansdorp finish. There are a couple different times that you can use it. Today, we're going to talk about how you can use it on the low ball. The problem that many of you out there are having is that when you swing, you're using your full follow through on a low ball and that causes you oftentimes to pull off of the ball and not to get a clean hit on it. And that of course will affect the quality of the shot, make the ball sit up, and then you're gonna lose confidence in your backhand. What I want you to practice doing is when you swing, you're going to stop your finish with the racket out in front instead of using that full follow through. So this is what it would look like if the ball came low and I went with the full follow through. So you can still hit good backhands this way, but I find that people oftentimes pull across the ball because it's so low, it's hard to extend out. And then you just don't keep that ball going in the direction of your target long enough. So what I like to see players do, including myself, is I like to swing and really just stop that finish with the racket out in front. So if I hold it right here, that forces me to extend out towards the target. Let me show it to you again. Okay, that helps me to keep the ball on the target line longer. Let me show you one in slow motion now. All right, so that's what you wanna do. You wanna focus on keeping your hands in front and using that Lansdorp finish on that low two-handed backhand. So what did you think of those two-handed backhand tips? Was there one tip in there that you can use the next time you step on the court to help you become a better tennis player and hit better two-handed backhands? I hope so, because I am absolutely committed to helping you. I'm passionate about helping tennis players. This is my why, to, my why is to change the paradigm in how tennis is taught, how it's played by players that are not professionals, because the reality is you can look more and more like the pros if you know what to focus on, if you focus on the right drills. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson today to help you with your two-handed backhand. And before you go today, I wanna to give you a free gift. If you click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video, you're going to be able to get access to a free membership inside Tennis Evolution. No credit cards, no money, no strings attached. I'm just gonna give you 21 amazing lessons valued at $576 absolutely free to you. 
click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video and you can access it inside our incredible Tennis Evolution app that players all around the world are raving about. And we'll see you at the next lesson and we wanna see you inside the app, inside the free membership. Okay, click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video.